اللهم اللهم إني أفتتح الثناء بحمدك وأنت مسدد للصواب بمنك وأيقنت أنك أنت أرحم الراحمين في موضع الأفو والرحمة وأشد المواقبين في موضع النكال والنقمة وعظم المتجبرين في موضع الكبرياء والعظمة اللهم أذنت لي في دعائك ومسألتك فاسمع يا سميع مدحتي وأجب يا رحيم دعوتي وأقل يا غفور وثرتي فكم يا إلهي من كربتين قد فرجتها وهموم قد كشفتها وعثرة قد أقلتها ورحمة قد نشرتها وحلقة بلاء قد فككتها الحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ صاحبة ولا ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبره تكبيرا الحمد لله الله أكبر الحمد لله بجميع محامده كلها على جميع نعمه كلها الحمد لله الذي لا مضاد له في ملكه ولا منازع له في أمره الحمد لله الذي لا شريك له في خلقه ولا شبيه له في عظمته الحمد لله الفاشي في الخلق أمره وحمده الظاهر بالكرم مجده الباسط بالجود يداه الذي لا تنقص خزائنه ولا تزيد قثرة العطاء إلا جودا وكرما إنه هو العزيز الوهاب اللهم إني أسألك قليلا من كثير ما حاجة بي إليه عظيمة وغناك عنه قديم وهو عندي كثير وهو عليك سهل يسير اللهم إن عفوك عن ذنبي وتجاوزك عن خطيئتي وسفحك عن ظلمي وسترك على قبيح عملي وحلمك عن كثير جرمي عندما كان من خطئي وعمدي أطمعني في أن أسألك ما لا أستوجبه منك الذي رزقتني من رحمتك وأريتني من قدرتك وأرفتني من إجابتك فصرت أدعوك آمنا وأسألك مستأنسا لا خائفا ولا وجلا مدلا عليك فيما قصدت فيه إليك فإن أبطع عني أتبت بجهلي عليك ولعل الذي أبطع عني هو خير لي لعلمك بآقبة الأمور فلم أرى مولا كريما أصبر على أبد لئيم منك علي يا رب إنك تدعوني فأولي عنك وتتحبب إلي فأتبغض إليك وتتودد إلي فلا أقبل منك كأن لي التطول عليك فلم يمنع كذلك من الرحمة لي والإحسان إلي وتفضل علي بجودك وكرمك فارحم عبدك الجاهل وجد عليه بفضل إحسانك إنك جواد كريم الحمد لله المالك الملك مجري الفلك مسخر الرياح فالق الإسباح ديان الدين رب العالمين الحمد لله على حلمه بعد علمه والحمد لله على عفوه بعد قدرته والحمد لله على طول أناته في غضبه وهو قادر على ما يريد الحمد لله الخالق الخالق باسط الرزق فالق الإسباح ذي الجلال والإكرام والفضل والإنعام الذي بعد فلا يرى وقرب فشهد النجوى تبارك وتعالى الحمد لله الذي ليس له منازع يعادله ولا شبيه يشاكله ولا ظهير يعاضده قهر بعزته الأعزاء وتواضع لعظمته العظماء فبلغ بقدرته ما يشاء الحمد لله الذي يجيبني حين أناديه ويستر علي كل عورة وأنا أعصيه ويوظم النعمة علي فلا أجازيه فكم من موهبة هنيئة قد أعطاني وعظيمة مخوفة قد كفاني وبهجة مونقة قد أراني فأثني عليه حامدا وأذكره مسبحا الحمد لله الذي لا يهتك حجابه ولا يغلق بابه 
ولا يرد سائله ولا يخيب آمله الحمد لله الذي يؤمن الخائفين وينجي الصالحين ويرفع المستضعفين ويضع المستكبرين ويهلك ملوكا ويستخلف آخرين والحمد لله قاسم الجبارين مبير الظالمين مدرك الهاربين كال الظالمين صريخ المستصرخين موضع حاجات الطالبين معتمد المؤمنين الحمد لله الذي من خشيته ترعد السماء وسكانها وترجف الأرض وأمارها وتموج البحار ومن يسبح في غمراتها الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي يخلق ولم يخلق ويرزق ولا يرزق ويطعم ولا يطعم ويميت الأحياء ويحيي الموتى وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وأمينك وصفيك وحبيبك وخيرتك من خلقك وحافظ سرك ومبلغ رسالاتك أفضل وأحسن وأجمل وأكمل وأزكى وأنما وأطيب وأطهر وأسنى وأكثر ما صليت وباركت وترحمت وتحننت وسلمت على أحد من عبادك وأنبيائك ورسلك وصفوتك وأهل الكرامة عليك من خلقك اللهم وصل على علي أمير المؤمنين ووصي رسول رب العالمين عبدك ووليك وأخي رسولك وحجتك على خلقك وآيتك الكبرى والنبأ العظيم وصل على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة سيدة نساء العالمين وصل على سبتي الرحمة وإمامي الهدى الحسن والحسين سيدي شباب أهل الجنة وصل على أئمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي حججك على عبادك وأمنائك في بلادك صلاة كثيرة دائما اللهم وصل على ولي أمرك القائم المؤمل والعدل المنتظر وحفه بملائكتك المقربين وأيده بروح القدس يا رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد اللهم اجعله الداعي إلى كتابك والقائم بدينك استخلفه في الأرض كما استخلفت الذين من قبله مكن له دينه الذي ارتضيت له أبدله من بعد خوفه أمنا يعبدك لا يشرك بك شيئا اللهم أعزه وأعزز به وانصره وانتصر به وانصره نصرا عزيزا وافتح له فتحا يسيرا واجعل له من لدنك سلطانا نصيرا اللهم أظهر به دينك وسنة نبيك حتى لا يستخفي بشيء من الحق مخافة أحد من الخلق اللهم ننا نرغب إليك في دولة كريمة تعز بها الإسلام وأهلا وتذل بها النفاق وأهلا وتجعلنا فيها من الدعاة إلى طاعتك والقادة إلى سبيلك وترزقنا وترزقنا بها كرامة الدنيا والآخرة اللهم ما, ما, ما عرفتنا من الحق فحملناه وما قصرنا عنه فبلغناه اللهم المن به شعثنا واشعب به صدعنا وارتق به فتقنا وكثر به قلتنا وأعزز به ذلتنا وأغن به عائلنا وقض به عن مغرمنا واجبر به فقرنا وسد به خلتنا ويسر به أسرنا وبيض به وجوهنا وفك به أسرنا وأنجح به طلبتنا وأنجح به طلبتنا وأنجز به مواعيدنا واستجب به دعوتنا وأعطنا به سؤلنا وبلغنا به من الدنيا والآخرة آمالنا وأعطنا به فوق رغبتنا يا خير المسؤولين وأوسع المعطين اشف به صدورنا 
وأذهب به غير قلوبنا وأهدنا به لما اختلف فيه من الحق بإذنك إنك تهدي من تشاء إلى صراط مستقيم وانصرنا به على عدوك وعدونا إلى الحق يا أمين اللهم إنا نشكو إليك فقد نبينا صلواتك عليه وآله وغيبة ولينا وكثرة عدونا وقلة عددنا وشدة الفتن بنا وتظاهر الزمان علينا فصل على محمد وآله وعنا على ذلك بفتح منك تعجله وبذر تكشفه ونصر تعزه وسلطان حق تظهره ورحمة منك تجللناها وعافية منك تلبسناها وبرحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم برحمتك في الصالحين فأدخلنا وفي الليين فارفعنا وبكأس من معين من عين سلسبيل فاسقنا ومن الحور العين برحمتك فزوجنا ومن الولدان المخلدين كأنهم لؤلؤ مكنون فأخدمنا ومن ثمار الجنة والحوم الطير فأتعمنا ومن ثياب السندس والحرير والاستبرق فألبسنا وليلة القدر وحج بيتك الحرام وقتلا في سبيلك ووفقنا ووفق لنا وصالح الدعاء والمسألة فاستجب لنا وإذا جمعت الأولين والآخرين يوم القيامة فارحمنا وبراءة من النار فاكتب لنا وفي جهنم فلا تغلنا وفي عذابك هوانك فلا تبتلنا ومن الزقوم والذري فلا تطعمنا ومع الشياطين فلا تجعلنا وفي النار على وجوهنا فلا تكببنا ومن ثياب النار وسرابيل القطران فلا تلبسنا ومن كل سوء يا لا إله إلا أنت بحق لا إله إلا أنت فنجنا اللهم إني أسألك أن تجعل فيما تقضي وتقدر من الأمر المحتوم في الأمر الحكيم من القضاء الذي لا يرد ولا يبدل أن تكتبني من حجاج بيتك الحرام المبرور حجهم المشكور سعيهم المغفور ذنوبهم المكفر عن سيئاتهم وأن تجعل فيما تقضي وتقدر أن تطيل عمري في خير وعافية وتوسع في رزقي وتجعلني ممن تنتصر به لدينك ولا تستبدل بي غيري أعوذ بجلال وجهك الكريم أن ينقضي عني شهر رمضان أو يطلع الفجر من ليلة هذه ولك قبلي تبعة أو ذنب تؤذبني عليه وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين محمد والے محمد صلوات بے درد مسلمان تو خوشیاں منا رہے ہیں بے درد مسلمان تو خوشیاں منا رہے ہیں عرب و عجم کے مولا دنیا سے جا رہے ہیں بے درد مسلمان تو خوشیاں منا رہے ہیں کچھ تو لحاظ کرتے داماد مصطفیٰ کا کچھ تو لحاظ کرتے داماد مصطفیٰ کا سجدے میں جو علی پہ ہر ظلم دھا رہے ہیں بے درد مسلمان تو خوشیاں منا رہے ہیں احمد کے بعد ظاہرا اب چل پڑھے علی بھی احمد کے بعد ظاہرا اب چل پڑھے علی بھی آثار پنج تن کے 
जालिम मिटा रहे हैं बेदर्द मुसलमान तो खुशियाँ मना रहे हैं बेदर्द मुसलमान तो खुशियाँ मना रहे हैं निकले हैं आग लेकर कुछ लोग शकीफा से निकले हैं आग लेकर कुछ लोग शकीफा से सादात के घरों को अब तक जला रहे हैं बेदर्द मुसलमान तो खुशियाँ मना रहे हैं बरसेंगे तीर पे हम ताबूत पर हसन के बरसेंगे तीर पे हम ताबूत पर हसन के मौला ये वक्त आखिर रो के बता रहे हैं बेदर्द मुसलमान तो खुशियाँ मना रहे हैं बेदर्द मुसलमान तो खुशियाँ मना रहे हैं मोहम्मद वाले मोहम्मद सलावत रोजादार क़यामत के दिन है इब्ने मुर जिम ने है दर को मारा रोजादार क़यामत के दिन है हमसे बिछड़ा है मौला हमारा हमसे बिछड़ा है मौला हमारा रोजादार क़यामत के दिन है खाके बेवारसी है सरों पर काले पर छम लगे हैं घरों पर खाके बेवारसी है सरों पर काले पर छम लगे हैं घरों पर हमसे बिछड़ा है मौला हमारा रोजादार क़यामत के दिन है इब्ने मुर जिमने है दर को मारा रोजादार क़यामत के दिन है शब ये उन्नीसवी कैसे आई खून में डूबा मोहम्मद का भाई शब ये उन्नीसवी कैसे आई में डूबा मोहम्मद का भाई रो रहा है शहर का सितारा रोजादार क़यामत के दिन है इब्ने मुर जिम ने है दर को मारा रोजादार क़यामत के दिन है इब्ने मुल जिम से तुम कैसा ढाया कब्र में सैदा को रुलाया इब्ने मुल जिम से तुम कैसा ढाया कब्र में सैदा को रुलाया कैसे बच्चों का होगा गुजारा रोजादार क़यामत के दिन है इब्ने मुल जिमने है दर को मारा 
रोजादार क़यामत के दिन है तेग सर पे अली के लगी है आज शाम आए मामद बुझी है तेग सर पे अली के लगी है आज शाम आए इमामत बुझी है दिल यतीम का है पारा पारा रोजादार क़यामत के दिन है इब्न मुजिम ने है दर को मारा रोजादार क़यामत के दिन है माँ के मरने का गम कम नहीं था एक को है अलम और टूटा माँ के मरने का गम कम नहीं था एक को है अलम और टूटा सोग में घर है जहरा का सारा रोजादार रोजादार क़यामत के दिन है इब्न मुजिम ने है दर को मारा रोजादार क़यामत के दिन है घर में है दर के है आहो सारी ईद नज़दीक गम का समा है घर में है दर के आहो फोगा है ईद नज़दीक गम का समा है ऐसा रमजाना आए दोबारा रोजादार रोजादार क़यामत के दिन है इब्न मुजिम ने है दर को मारा रोजादार क़यामत के दिन है बर मोहम्मद वाल मोहम्मद सलवा सलवाद मोहम्मद वाल मोहम्मद में तीन शेर मौलाए कायनत की फजीलत के हिसाब से सलवाद भेजे मोहम्मद वाल मोहम्मद में चर्चा जहाँ में तेरी फजीलत का म है चर्चा जहाँ में तेरी फजीलत का आम है तेरा हर एक लफ्ज बलागत निजाम है तेरा हर एक लफ्ज बलागत निजाम है ए बिस्तर रसूल की खुशबू के हम नशी ए बिस्तर रसूल की खुशबू के हम नशी तेरी शुजातों को हमारा सलाम है तेरी शुजातों को हमारा सलाम है खतरा नहीं के तजा ये पीटने 
کی جا ہے غلام نے مرتضا آقا کی گوش دل سے مصیبت سنو ذرا ایسا کری میسا سخی ایسا پیشوا بے جرم حق کے سجدے میں مجروح ہو گیا بے جرم حق کے سجدے میں مجروح ہو گیا فرصت نہ دی نماز کی اس روز دار کو نہلا دیا لہو میں شہ ذوالفقار کو نہلا دیا لہو میں شہ ذوالفقار کو سجدے میں شیر حق کا دو پارا ہوا جو سر ایک بار کانپنے لگے مسجد کے بام و در ابلا لہو کے ہو گئی محراب خون سے تر ایک زلزلہ سا بس ہوا نازل زمین پر گردوں پہ جب رہی پکارا غزب ہوا گردوں پہ جب رہی پکارا غزب ہوا سجدے میں حق کے قتل امیر عرب ہوا سجدے میں قتل حق کے امیر عرب ہوا ہے پیٹنے کی جائے غلامان مرتضا سلوات So we have sent out on the WhatsApp group the link to the will of Imam Ali alayhi salam which we are studying in these nights. So I request again that you open the will and inshallah we will continue to read it tonight. Salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allah min ash rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين 
وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين أما بعد فقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وفرقانه الحميد وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كتب عليكم إذا حذر أحدكم الموت إن ترك خيلا الوصية للوالدين والأقربين بالمعروف حقا على المتقين آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Awaited Savior of Humanity, Imam Al-Mahdi alayhi salam, my respected teachers, elders, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the first part of our series last night, we introduced the will of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, salawatullah wa salamuhu alayhi. Allahumma salam alayhi. The will is from letter number 31 of Nahjar Balagha. Imam Alihi Salam is returning back from the Battle of Sifin and he writes a most profound will to his son, our second Imam Hassan Al Mujtaba. Salawatullah Salamuhu Alayhi. The section that we read last night were the first two sections in which the Imam says that he gives himself six qualities of him realizing that his time is now up in life and 14 qualities of his son in describing him in his youth, describing him with the appreciation of a man who has lived through this life and then can advise the description of what his son is going through in life. We then came to the second section in which Imam Ali salam says that the world turned away from me and the next world came towards me. And I realized that I needed to make seriousness in my affairs, in my matters. And so I realized that I needed to direct myself towards you, my son. He says, I found you a part of myself, nay, rather, I found you the whole of myself, such that whatever was to befall you was actually to befall me. And if any accident or illness or death was to approach you, my son, it was the same as if it was to have approached me. Consequently, your affairs, the matter of your life, my son, meant to me what my own matters meant to myself. So I have written this piece of advice to you as an instrument of seeking help through it, whether I remain alive or whether I cease to exist. And we mentioned yesterday that according to our fourth Imam, Zainul Abidin, salawatullah wa salamuhu a father is most responsible for the upbringing of his child. In Risalat al huquq Imam alayhi salam says that you as a father are most mas'ul, responsible for the tarbiyah of your son, your child, your daughter, and for directing them towards their Lord. In fact, on the Day of Judgment, Allah will ask a father about the education of his child before asking the mother. And this is because it is primarily the father's duty to ensure that good education and upbringing is available to the child. Through this letter, we begin to appreciate the way in which Imam Ali alayhi salam deals with this responsibility and how he begins to instruct and leave guidance for his child and express himself. Now tonight we enter into the first part of the Wasiya proper itself, having concluded the introduction. And what you'll find is that the Imam alayhi salam focuses on the idea that Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, like any child, should be grounded in certain qualities. When I say grounded, what I mean is that, like any building, if you are able to put the foundations in, 
then of course what is built above the foundations can be sturdy. Whereas, of course, if you build upon poor foundations, then the house cannot stand properly. What we highlight here in this section of the will is what the Imam means by good foundations. Imagine I came to you and I said, instruct good foundations into your child. You might say, what are those foundations? In this section of the will, the Imam elaborates on what those foundations are. In the idea that when we want to be able to train our own children or our own selves as youth, these are the fundamental qualities that we want to be able to inculcate within ourselves. The Imam lists these one by one and the idea tonight is for us to be able to reflect on this section of the will of Imam alayhi salam. What you'll find in there is most important about the number of things following. Number one, Imam, Allah Imam instructs Imam al Hassan alayhi salam to make sure that he regularly finds a way to be able to enliven his heart. Number two, for Imam al Hassan alayhi salam to kill the deviations that might lie within him early on, as early as possible. And then thirdly, as a youth, to develop an eye of insight such that whatever he sees, whatever he comes across in life, he does not see it from an apparent, superficial, shallow level, but he has a means to be able to understand the realities of what he has seen in front of him. These are the three outstanding things the Imam tells to Imam al Hassan alayhi salam in Akhirah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the following amanu, those who believe. وَكَانُوا يَتَّقُونَ And that they are God-conscious. لَهُمُ الْبُشْرَى For them is Bushra. It's glad tidings. فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَى Most people imagine that taqwa is something that is going to lead them towards success in the Akhira. Allah will hand them their book of deeds in Akhira. Rather, success also comes in a dunyawi sense as well. Meaning, that if you want to have success in your job, if you want to have success in your university education, if you want to think about this particular section of this wasiyah and see how our scholars have commented upon this most interesting part. The first thing for us to be able to appreciate about this time is that Imam is addressing a fellow ma'soom. Does a ma'soom need to revive his heart? Well, in fact, Imam is telling Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, make sure that your heart is constantly being revived. And kill what part of your heart needs to be killed. So look at the language. Enliven, revive your heart. And Lee is turning. At moments, you are alive. In the du'a, what do we say? Ya muqallib al qulub. Oh, the one who turns the hearts. Thabbit qalbi ala dinik. Make firm my heart upon your way of life, upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even in this du'a that we make, we realize that the heart goes through this motion. At times we are very conscious and aware of Allah, and at times we need the revival. Imam tells his own son, Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, revive your heart. But at the same time, he also tells him, kill what is holding you back from within your heart. Now you might think that because this is addressing a ma'asum, it is being spoken to us. This is not correct. When Imam speaks, he speaks for himself. And the Imam is truly feeling these things. You'll notice even when Imam says in his ad'iyah, in his du'a, for example, in du'a kumail, when he's seeking istighfar, when he's complaining to Allah, these are real words from Imam Ali alayhi salam. It is not something that he is just saying for you and I 1400 years later. As an example, you will find in the hadith that even the Holy Prophet himself used to ask 
for his heart to be enlivened. Think about that. This is the creature of Allah that reached Allah two bows or closer on the Mi'raj. Is there anyone's heart who's more alive than the Prophet's? Aisha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi has a hadith where she says, when the Prophet slept, his eyes would sleep, but his heart was never asleep. Meaning that the Prophet was constantly in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His eyes might close, but we never felt that there was a moment when he stopped his connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Despite that, that man, the Prophet himself used to ask to have his heart re-enlivened from time to time. The hadith comes to us from our sixth Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq salawat Allah wa salamuhu alayhi. Hadith says, the Prophet asked Jibra'il Amin, Addini, give me mawa'idha, give me advice. I want you to enliven me and say something that is going to revive my heart. Now, it doesn't mean that the Prophet himself felt like he was low in that moment, but no matter what his state, he always felt like he could ascend further. He always felt like he needed to be reminded of something beneficial to his life. So Imam alayhi salam says, Jibra'il responds, O Muhammad, listen to this hadith and think about how Jibra'il Amin revived the heart of the Prophet, made sure that he was always conscious. Ya Muhammad, live as long as you want. But the reality is you'll be met with death. Live how you want. Live for as long as you want. You think you will last 70 or 100 years. The reality is death is approaching you. O oh, Muhammad, his son, the following. He says, O oh, my dear son, if at any moment you doubt that you could die shortly, today or tomorrow or coming days, if you doubt it, if you think you have such a long life that you can do whatever you want, if you think you can doubt death, then defy going to sleep. Subhanallah. How long are you going to stay awake for? 36 hours? How long are you going to fight sleep off for? But eventually the drowsiness will overcome you. At times you don't even want to sleep. Drowsiness overcomes you. If you think you can fight off death, no problem. Fight off sleep. Let's see if you can do it. Will you do it? How long are you going to last? Oh my dear son, if you think you can fight off death, fight off sleep. And if you think you can delay or fight off the day of judgment, then see if you don't wake up from your sleep. Are you in control? Do you think that you won't wake up? No, you go to sleep eight hours later. Even if you sleep for 10 hours, 12 hours, how long are you going to sleep for before eventually your own eyes open? If you think that you cannot be raised from the ground, Fight off waking up from your sleep. Subhanallah. You will never be able to do so. And if you think long and hard, and if you think long and hard about your actions, you will realize that in reality, all of your actions are going to be held to account. In reality, sleep. وَإِنَّمَا النَّوْمِ بِمَنْزِلَةِ الْمَوْتِ the sleep that you go through, it is just an exchange, a position for death. And your awakening, after you sleep, is nothing more than a demonstration and a preparation for your raising on the day of judgment after your death. The point I make is that the Prophet asked for advice and warning to enliven his heart. And that Luqman السلام, even told his young son, these things in order to ground him in correct understanding about his role in dunya. To understand that his time is limited here within dunya. Imam alayhi salam tells his son, enliven your heart by preaching to it. And kill what is in your heart by denial. What does this mean? It means zuhud. It means that you learn to be able to cut off from your heart that which is not actually needed 
And everything that is going to hold you back, you need to be able to learn to be able to kill off from yourself as early as possible. Why? Because if you go through your youth and you do not kill off those bad traits within you, eventually they will become part and parcel of you. They will become habitual and they will become so difficult for you to be able to break off from those deeds, eventually they will become part and parcel of you. Ask yourself, how many bad habits started in youth that continue on until middle age, until end of age? Because a person could not overcome them during their own life. Now actually in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this killing off in these words, killing off of bad deeds. If you open your Qur'ans, Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter number 2 of the Holy Qur'an. I'm just trying to find the ayah for some reason it uh, escapes me when it comes to Banu Israel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them to kill off the shirk that existed within them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them kill what is inside yourself and this will be able to remove what is within yourselves if you turn to verse number 54 of Surah Al-Baqarah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually uses this same wording that Imam Ali alayhi salam says. <coughs> Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Verse 54. Wa idh qala Musa li qawmihi. When Musa alayhi salam said to his community, Ya qawmi, innakum dhalamtum anfusakum bi ittikhadikum ul ijla fatubu ila bari'ikum. Oh my people, you have surely done injustice to yourself by taking a calf for a god. So return back to your Lord penitently. Look at the next part of the ayah. Faqtulu anfusakum. Kill yourselves. You see that shirk that was within them, so long it remained, it would come back and back and back again, wouldn't it? Tell me, when did their love for an idol, a calf, come back to them? Musa alayhi salam departs, doesn't he, for 30 days. Allah adds 10 more, doesn't he? It becomes 40. What happens? One from amongst them, Samari, he creates a sort of idol, doesn't he? That can move in the wind and starts to make sounds as if it's like a cow. Before, they actually took a physical cow as their god. Allah said, Kill that which is within yourselves. Completely annihilate and destroy the evil that lies within you. Did they do it? No. The next time they were presented with a cow, it wasn't even a physical through to the hellfire. Think about that. It's what we call ihbat. Amongst the qualities, those people who have that fate now immediately go through. And you know that there are those old men, those playboy men, those men who, with all the money and all the wealth in the position that they have, they still can't stop themselves. You hear them every single week come up on the news, don't you? And the way in which they treated women in Hollywood or in any other situation. Why? He had his whole life, 70, 80 years to be able to defeat what was within him. He still could not do it. And now at an age where he doesn't even need that, he still can't control himself. He's completely defeated by that shahwa. Imam has a hadith. That person, he goes straight through because there's nothing for him. He spent a life subservient to those shahwat. He could not defeat it. Look at what Imam Ali alayhi salam says to his young son. Enliven your heart and kill what is within yourself with zuhd. So that it doesn't exist any longer before you become a fully fledged, fully grown adult. So that you're no longer fighting those. He continues. Enliven your heart with preaching. Kill it by denial. Energize it with firm belief. Enlighten it with wisdom. Humiliate it. Lower it by recalling death. 
make it believe in mortality make it see the misfortunate of this world make it fear the authority of the time and the severity of the changes during the nights and the days and then the imam concludes by telling imam al-hasan alayhi salam have insight in whatever you see around the world wherever you go make sure that when you see the world you take a lesson from it look at what imam alayhi salam says Place before it the events of past people. Recall to it what befell those who were before you. Walk in their cities and their ruins. Then see what they did and what they have gone away from, where they have gone to and where they have stayed. You will find that they departed from their friends and remain in their graves in a state of loneliness. Shortly you too will be one like them. Therefore, plan for your place of stay and do not sell your akhirah for this dunya. Imam advises his son, have an eye full of basira, that when you walk through the ruins and the cities, know that those who have gone before you, they are ahead of you, but not by much, you will be following them very soon. Three key advices that Imam advises to his young son here. Number one, constantly enliven your heart. Number two, kill early on what is deviant, what is deviating you from within your heart. And number three, develop an eye of insight. Take blessing and understanding from whatever is in front of you. Those companions who were with Imam Ali alayhi salam in his final hours were able to take the blessings of Imam in his final moments. Imam, just before his Salat al-Fajr, is struck on his beautiful head. This is a head that has remained in hours in sajda before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He cries out, Fuztu wa Rabbil Ka'bah. Jibreel Amin can only scream out at this moment and say that the pillars of guidance have been cut. The earth itself begins to shake. The whole of Kufa is wondering what has occurred. Imam Ali alayhi salam is dragged back to his house. In moments like this, the pain and the suffering of Imam became too much. It said in the narration that at this moment, the, the household closes the door and says to the companions of Kufa, please, Amir al-Mu'mineen is no longer in a state to be able to have any visitors. Please all leave from this door. Can you imagine the heartbreak of the companions knowing that they are no longer able to sit with Ali ibn Abi Talib, no longer be able to take benefit from the presence of Ali ibn Abi Talib. All of the companions leave but one by the name of Asbagh bin Nubata. Asbagh knocks on the door. Imam al Hassan alayhi salam opens it and says, Oh Asbagh, did we not ask all of you to be able to leave? Imam is in too much pain. He cannot sit straight. He is kicking in pain. Please, please leave. Asbagh refuses. He says, Oh Imam al Hassan, I cannot bear the thought of not seeing my Imam one last time. Please grant me an audience for just a few more minutes. Imam al Hassan allows Asbagh to come in. This is the last companion to see Ali ibn Abi Talib alive. Asbagh enters and he sits down by the bedside of Ali ibn Abi Talib. The hadith says that he bursts into tears. He cries his eyes out looking at Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ali with a little bit of strength looks up at Asbagh. He says, oh my dear Asbagh, why do you cry? Your imam is still with you here for a few minutes. Asbagh says, I do not cry except that I know that you will be departing from me in a few minutes time. I have never seen you in such a situation. Asbagh was asked, how did you find Ali ibn Abi Talib? He says, Ali had a turban wrapped around his head to stop the bleeding. But no longer was he just bleeding. This white turban had become green with the pus and the amount of poison that was coming from the head of Imam Ali alayhi salam. How much poison? 